how do you play never ending runs? How do you not stop? How do you gain the ability, the skill to just keep on keeping on? Because that's a crucial, right? You, you don't want to play a run and then suddenly you can't do anything. You just, burr, you just stop and then you have to pick it up again. That sounds weird, right? And that creates an uncertainty within you if you don't know how to just keep on going. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to give you a simple exercise that if you do it enough, it will never happen again. Uh, so we're going to look into that. And I should say that we have a new program out that you can check out uh, on our website, a new program bundle that's just packed with neoclassical ideas and pieces. And it's so cool. So you need to go check out that out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, go make sure you sign up for this free program here on ne neoclassical phrasing. So you can download the tabs and the jam tracks that comes with these lessons here. So let's look into how do you not stop playing fast runs. And it doesn't matter what fast run we're talking about or what sequence you're playing. It's all about creating a platform that you can stand on, like an engine, like you're driving in a car and you want to stop the car, but you don't want to stop the engine. What is that for you when you play a run? And when this, you know, when I got this idea, it was like, Eureka, I can do this. I can learn to do this. And the secret to doing it is creating a loop that you are so good at. It's the same loop every time. It's just one loop. And because it's one, you can become so good at it and you can make sure that it's easy to stay there. So you're playing a run and then the brain says, I don't know where to go now because I'm running out of scale shape. I can't remember what comes next. And then the, because you've been training it into your brain, you just immediately go to your platform, your loopable little lick that you just go into. So instead of stopping, you go into the loopable lick. Instead of stopping, you go into the lick, right? You, you replace that response in the brain with, oh, uncertainty, bam, you're into the loop. But in order to create that connection between playing a run and then bam, go into the loop every time you feel uncertain, you need to practice it over and over and over again at a slower level of speed than fast, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So um, what is that loop for me? Well, I have one loop with one variation that I use. And you can't hear it when I play. Uh, so it's not like, oh, here comes his loop again, right? Because I'm so quickly into it and out of it at the level I am at now that you won't even hear it. But here's the loop. Let's just, uh, in this case, in this jam track, we're in the key of G minor. And the first chord being played in the jam track is the G minor chord. So you just play G natural minor with your home bass your secure notes being the G minor arpeggio. Then we go to the D major chord, which changes the G minor scale to the G harmonic minor scale. And you want to have, if you want to have that really neoclassical sound, you want to have the G flat diminished arpeggio that you focus on within that G minor, G harmonic minor scale. If this doesn't make sense to you, uh, look it up, <laughs> right? But so, First position here, you can follow if, even if you're on an acoustic right now. So pick up your guitar. This is my loop. This is what I use every single time and that you almost can't hear because it's more of a concept in my brain and body than it is really something I play a lot. In the beginning, I played it a lot. And then you play it less and less and less as you get better at it. But I'm just playing four notes up and down. So I start here sometimes. Uh, I have these four notes and I'm in the first position, G minor, natural minor scale. I have the third, the fourth and the sixth fret on the B string. And then I have the fifth fret on the G string. But this could be any, any string. I'm just playing three notes on one string and then one note on the lower string. Right? And in the previous uh, lesson, we actually had a run that, that utilizes this, uh, this little concept here. So it's a good run to practice, but practice this loop first. So it's simply, I'm picking my way from the third to the fourth to the sixth with alternate picking, down, up, down. And then I'm pulling off down to the uh, fourth fret and down to the third, picking the note in the fifth fret on the, on the G string and going right back to the third fret on the B string. Upstroke on the G string fifth fret and then downstroke in the third fret. Pick again and then pull off pull off, just up and down. Now, why am I using a combination of alternate picking and, and pull-offs? It's because if I were to play this uh, little loop only with hammer-ons and pull-offs, only picking when I go from string to string, then if I play this fast, 
it's easier to get left hand fatigue by looping that for a long time. If I only do hammer-ons or pull-offs. Uh, but if I pick some of the notes, I easen up the pressure on this hand because it can relax for those notes that I'm picking. And the right hand doesn't have to do alternate picking all the way. It doesn't have to do... Which could, you know, mean fatigue and extra focus on both hands here. So the loop has to be something that you can easily play, that you don't get tired of playing, because it has to be, you know, like a platform you can stand on and then take a break there and then move on, right? And then you spend less and less time there until you can't really hear what you're doing. If I have to stay, stay there, though, for a long time, I have a little variation I can put in. I, I play... Instead of just playing four notes up and down, I play... I use an extra hammer-on in the fourth fret and pulling off down to the third in the middle of it, so I go... So when I have done my two pull-offs, I hammer on again to the um, the fourth fret and pull off down to the third. So I go. What? And you need to practice if you want this, and you can totally take it. It doesn't it doesn't influence your playing style in any way. It's just a little platform you can stand on. <laughs> then you you must go from playing. And then to kind of go back and forth between the two. And because it's out of time, it's a really cool thing to... I can just use this as a fast little run in and of itself. I don't have to use anything else for that. Yeah. The, the cool thing is that I can put this in between anything. It doesn't matter where I am. And the way I practice doing that is, you know, I when I started uh, practicing scale shapes, I went up and down the scale shape like most people do, which is relatively ineffective, ineffective uh, if you want to learn the shape. But it's also, it builds a pattern within your fingers. And then if you can stand on a platform between going up and down the scale, then what happens is that you can pretty much put that platform in wherever you are. So... Uh, whatever you come from, whatever sequence or run or whatever, as long as you have three notes on one string and one on the lower string. So what I practiced doing was simply to go up and down. Let's say we've got the... Uh... Okay, so now I'm doing it on the top string when I get to that place. Okay, now I'm going down to the two middle strings. And doing it there. And then the two lower. Or I can do it on the G and B, right, when I get to that place. And it doesn't matter when you play it. You just fit it in there. So you go down the scales, you know, like if I go... Uh, uh, it doesn't matter where you put it in. It just has to fit in there like a flow. It's like going up the staircase. You go up to number five, and then from five, that's your high point because then, then you reach, or let's say you go six up. That could be your start, right? Because now you have your fourth finger and, and can go pull off, pull off. Right? So I go up to the top note on the D string, and then I can pull off, pull off, and start my... Oh, I can start it in my mind when I'm hitting the lower note on the string. So I can go... Oh, sorry, what the... F right? You have to play around with it so much and put it into these scale runs so much so that you have that platform. And the, the way to do that, the way to take the biggest step is point one, to learn the loop so it's easy. Point two, to take it in just a just a, a plain scale run and then put it in whenever you are, you know, in the scale. The, the, the third step 
is to say, okay, now, and you want to come out of it again. You must come out of the scale one, right? The third step is to uh, incorporate it into more complex ones. So if you have another lick, like, you know... You stop messing with that, like... I'm doing the same thing. I'm just going... That's the next note in my sequence, but instead of going, you know, on with the sequence, I have the top note on any string that has three notes, and I go... Right? So I go... And then you start putting it... Every time you practice a new sequence, a new run, you, you, you practice using the platform with that run. Right? Another little tip here before uh, I end this session is that you can also use it as a way of ending your phrases, which is really cool. But I'm going to teach you that in the next lesson. Uh, so hang on for that. This is, uh, th these concepts here are very few, but they're very effective. They will solve really problems that will haunt you for the rest of your life if you don't do this. Some people do it intuitively. They just learn it because they're lucky to pick the right method, and they don't know what method that is. It just seems easy to them. That's what we call talent. But it's really just, you know, intuition. Um, but if you if you know what it is and how to practice it, you can really get the most amazing results in the shortest period of time without having that luck or intuition, whatever you want to call it. So stay tuned for tomorrow's lesson here and uh, check out the tabs for a couple of examples of, uh, of, of how to incorporate this into your playing. And go download the jam tracks on our website and check out the new bundle program right away. It's really a extreme value offer, I promise you. There's so much good stuff in there. So see you in tomorrow's lesson where we will uh, look at how you end these runs in the coolest way possible using your platform of your loopable link. So see you tomorrow.